What's up, Smart Homers? My name's Aaron, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a 32 by 32 LED matrix display controlled by WLED. Okay, so the supplies you're gonna need are a controller, a microphone, a power supply, four 16 by 16 LED matrices, and some sort of frame or housing. There are a couple other things I'll use along the way, but I'm gonna leave links for everything I use in the description. For a controller, we're gonna go with an ESP32 Node MCU. They're nice and small, and they have pins on them, which will help out when we're trying to connect our microphone. If you're following along with this project, be careful you don't use a Node MCU that has an ESP8266 chip rather than the ESP32 because the sound reactive fork of WLED does not support ESP8266 controllers. When in doubt, just use the one that I link in the description. For a microphone, I'm just going with a Max 4466 just because I've seen them used in other people's WLED projects and I didn't want to go through a bunch of different microphones. I am working on a video where I show you a bunch of different ways that you can set up sound reactive WLED. For the LED matrices, I'm actually using four 16 by 16 WS2812B Eco LED matrices from BTF Lighting. With this many LEDs, you're really not gonna wanna set them at full brightness anyway, so using the eco version of the LEDs is just fine. For the frame, I decided to use a 13 inch by 13 inch record frame from Amazon. The frame comes with a cardboard backer that we can mount the matrices to, and it fits all four of them nicely. If you've seen my previous videos, you've seen that I 3D print these grids that go on the matrix and help direct the light of the LEDs to make it look pixely. I did the same here, printing four two and a half millimeter thick grids, one for each matrix, and then gluing them all together. I also ended up replacing the front clear plastic with some 1 8 inch acrylic, which I'll explain a little bit later. For the actual diffuser material itself, instead of using a 3D printed diffuser, I decided to go with some PVC photography backdrop material to diffuse the LEDs. This actually works super well as a diffuser, but it isn't very stiff, and this causes some problems, which I'll show later. For the four 3D printed grids that I made, I'll leave a Thingiverse link to that. So the last thing we'll need is a power supply. As I've previously shown, you need to choose a power supply based on the number of LEDs and the type of LED that you have in your projects. I'm gonna use a 15 amp power supply because that should provide more than enough brightness for this display. Before we put everything together, we need to flash the Node MCU with WLED. All you have to do is connect your controller to your PC using a micro USB port, and then go to install.wled.me, choose the latest sound reactive version, and then click install. A pop-up box should show that the installer has found your controller. If you don't know which one is yours, you could unplug it and then plug it back in and then see which one disappears and reappears. And that'll tell you which one is your controller. If you're using Firefox as your browser, the pop-up box may not appear. Select your controller from the list, click connect, wait for it to connect, and then click install WLED SR. Click install again and wait for the installation to finish. Now that it has WLED installed on it, click next, type in your Wi-Fi SSID and password, and click connect. This will connect your controller to your Wi-Fi. Once that's done, click visit device, and it'll take you to the WLED user interface. The next thing I like to do is head to config, click Wi-Fi setup, and then go ahead and change the AP SSID and the MDNS address to something you can remember easily for accessing this device in the future. Once you're done, press save and connect. After that, click the back button in your browser. Head to the configuration menu again and tap LED preferences. First, change the strip or panel option to 2D matrix panel. After that, more options will appear. For the width and height, input the total width and height of our matrix in pixels, which would be 32 by 32. Next, check the multiple panels option and then put in the dimensions of your matrix in panels. So this would be two horizontal panels and two vertical panels since we're using a two by two matrix made up of four panels total. 
Now we need to set the first LED position, which in my case will be the top left, and the orientation is vertical. Lastly, we need to check the serpentine box since that's how our matrices are configured. These settings are a bit confusing, but the best bet may be just to connect your matrices and then play around with the settings until the matrix looks the way you want. If you copy the exact way I'm doing it, your matrix should be configured properly. Make sure enable auto brightness limiter is checked and set the maximum current for the maximum that the supply can handle. I'm gonna put 15,000 milliamps in that field since I chose a 15 amp power supply. This is going to ensure that your controller doesn't tell the matrix to draw more power than your power supply can actually handle. You do want to consider the amount of heat that your panels are generating, especially if you're putting in some sort of plastic housing, so I'd recommend dropping it even a little bit lower. Next, make sure the LED voltage is set for 5 volts. Down in the hardware setup section, set the LED type and color order. For our LEDs, choose WS281X and GRB. Lastly, change the LED count to 1024 and then scroll down to the bottom and press the save button. Now you can disconnect your controller from your PC, we're done flashing, but we'll set up the sound reactive settings a little bit later on. Okay, before we assemble everything, let's lay out the matrices the way we want them. This way we can see how they'll look when the project's all done. Take the four matrices and lay them face down on a flat surface. Lay them out so that the input connection for each matrix is in the upper left corner as I've done here. Before we connect them all together, let's go ahead and mount them. Like I mentioned before, I got this 13 inch by 13 inch record frame off of Amazon and it fits the four matrices perfectly. I opened it up so that I could get at the cardboard backer since that's where I want to mount the matrices. Next, we need to cut some holes in the cardboard where the cables on the backs of the matrices will poke through. I first secured the four matrices together as I had them laid out with some double-sided mounting strips. I placed one in the center to hold all of the inside corners of the matrices together, and then I cut a few of them in half and used them to secure the inside edges that are touching. After this, I used a pencil and a ruler to kind of mark out generally on the cardboard backer where the holes need to be for the matrix cables, and then I cut them out with a utility knife. Once you've cut them out, you can slip all of the cables through the holes and then peel off the double-sided tape protector on those strips that you placed on the backs of the matrices and then adhere the matrices to the cardboard backer. After that, we can flip the backer over and take a look at the cables. Now, we're going to connect them in a specific order. We'll connect the top left matrix to the top right one and then the top right to the bottom left and then finally the bottom left to the bottom right. Next, we'll connect all of the power injection wires that are coming off the back of each matrix together. And to do this, I'll be using some five terminal Wago connectors. First, we'll take our wire strippers and strip away a bit of the insulation from each of the red and black wires. And then we'll connect all of the black wires to one five terminal Wago and all of the reds together in another five terminal Wago. You'll notice that we have an extra terminal in each and that's for the power input to the matrix. To add power to the matrix, I used a two wire DC adapter connecting the wires to the extra terminals on the Wago connectors, red to red, black to black. Next, we need to connect the controller and to do that, we're gonna take one of the spare female connectors that come with these matrices and we're gonna solder the wires of that connector to the controller. First, I split the wires apart a little ways and then using my wire strippers, I removed a bit of the insulation off the ends of the wires. Next, I used my helping hands to hold the wires in place and then using my soldering iron, I tinned the wires. This is really just adding some solder to the wires to help when we're attaching them to the controller. For this, we'll need the VN, ground, and D2 pins on the Node MCU. I put the node MCU in the helping hand and carefully soldered the red wire to the VN pin, the white wire to the ground pin, and the green wire to the D2 pin. Okay, so now that we have the matrix connector soldered to the node MCU, we should connect our microphone. This microphone comes with a set of pins, so first we're going to solder the pins to the microphone. I use my helping hands to hold the microphone and the pins in place and then applied solder to the pin holes. After that, the pins seemed to be secured pretty well. Next, I decided to use these DuPont wires with female pin connectors on both ends to connect the microphone to the controller. I connected three wires 
to the VIN out and ground pins on the microphone, and then connected the VIN wire to the 3V3 pin on the controller, the out wire to the D35 pin on the controller, and then the ground wire I left not connected. I'll show how we connect that in a second. Next, I connected the controller to the matrix using the cable connector that I attached earlier, and then stuck it to the cardboard backer with a piece of mounting strip. I also attached the microphone to the backer with an adhesive strip as well. The only thing left now is to connect the microphone's ground wire to one of the ground terminals on the back of the matrices. I tried popping it into one of the Wago terminals, but that didn't seem to provide a reliable connection, so I soldered it directly to one of the solder pads on the back of the matrices, removing that female connector first. Now that we have everything connected, we need to finish making the diffuser housing. First, I used the transparent plastic that came with the frame as a template to cut two pieces of the white diffuser PVC material. Next, I laid the backer with the matrices mounted on it on a flat surface and placed the four 3D printed grids on the matrices. I laid the diffuser material over those, added the clear plastic, and then finally added the frame. Holding them all together, I flipped them over and secured the backer with the clips on the back. I found that since the whole thing had gotten thicker, the clips weren't holding it in place. So I had to modify them a little with some pliers so that they would hold it in properly. The clear plastic that came with the frame was a little bit too bendy and it was allowing the white PVC material to come away from those grids, taking away from the pixel the look I wanted. So I bought some 1 8 inch acrylic material to replace it. I used the original plastic as a template again, and I cut out a piece of the acrylic with my table saw. This made everything more stiff, but also thicker, so when I reassembled it, it was a little bit more difficult to get the backer clip secured. After this, you're pretty much good to go. Just connect the power supply cable, and then head on into WLED, and we can configure the sound reactive settings. Navigate to your controller's address, and then once there, click configuration, and then click sound settings. To start off, I set the squelch to 3 and the gain to 20, and for this microphone, that was fine. If those settings don't seem to work for you, you can play around with them until you get them just the way you want. And don't forget that there is a screw on the microphone itself that allows you to adjust the gain manually. Automatic gain control should be off in the settings, the microphone type should be generic, and the input pin should be set to 35. Click save and you're good to go. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now you can try out all the 2D matrix settings that I showed you in the previous video, and they're all pretty much the same. They just are laid out a little bit different in the UI. But now the sound reactive settings will actually work because you have a microphone and you're using the sound reactive version of WLED. A couple of my favorites are 2D GEQ and the 2D Akemi effects, which work really great as visualizers. Also, pixel art looks really great in the 32 by 32 size, but I'll be covering that in a future video. For now, take a look at some of the really cool 2D effects.
Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and hit subscribe if you want to see more WLED stuff as well as some more Home Assistant stuff. Like I mentioned before, I have a WLED pixel art part two coming up where I'm going to show you an even easier way to handle pixel art and WLED thanks to some commenters from previous videos. And I'm also working on a WLED sound reactive video where I show you a bunch of different options for microphones and controllers. If you want to support the channel, you can always become a member or you can pick up some of my custom t-shirts. Either way, you're putting money back into the channel so that I can make better videos for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or hop on our discord. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya.